Hello and welcome back to our introduction to time series. Today we're going to be discussing the importance of model quality and, and some basic uh, model quality outputs that you do get from uh, R that can kind of be confusing because they're just a bunch of random numbers and, and abbreviations. And so I just want to go over what do these abbreviations mean and uh, how are they calculated specifically because when you're creating these models it's great to know which models are doing the best and which models are doing not as good and yes you could use technically your your eyes and, and gauge it but you're you're really guessing so mathematically what are the ways that we uh, just gauge model quality now many of you might have learned these errors a long time ago when you were first maybe doing a statistics course or something of that nature but we're going to go over these because they get very they can get very confusing as a lot of them look the same and some of them are, are even calculated very similarly Today we're going to be discussing the MAE, uh, the root mean squared error, uh, the mean absolute scaled error, and the mean absolute percentage. So the mean absolute error, also known as the MAE, is essentially the average of the all the absolute errors. In order to find this, you essentially will get the actual and the forecast, figuring out the difference between the two. Um, per each forecasted value and per each actual value, figure out the absolute value and then take the average. It's important to note that this is the absolute value because this ensures that if you were to, for instance, have one value or one error be one and the other error be negative one, that the absolute value or the mean absolute error is still one rather than them canceling out because one plus negative one equals zero. Next, we'll talk about the root mean squared error. So this one can be a little bit confusing because it almost seems very similar to the mean absolute error. You're still kind of getting the average value and then you're squaring it and then taking the square root and it can kind of seem like those two things should cancel out. However, this, this is important to note that the order matters here. Essentially, what this error does is punish much larger errors uh, versus the smaller errors. So basically it puts a larger weight uh, towards errors that are larger because as you go through, for instance, if you were to have one error be uh, two and the other error be five, when you square those, one of those will turn to four and one of those will turn to 25. So you, as the errors get bigger, it's not an increment of one, you're actually changing the value much, much heavier each increasing value so essentially the root mean squared error punishes much larger errors much more heavily than just the mean absolute error next we'll talk about the mean absolute percent error or percentage error the the, the key here is that this actually just takes the percent so a lot of the times when you're using the mae or the root mean squared error what you will end up getting is large numbers things like 172 192 and really it doesn't mean a lot it's it's almost very confusing because there's no real is 172 good is it 544 bad what does this mean um, but having the mean absolute percentage error uh, it actually tells you the percent of the error so you're getting the difference between the actual and the forecast yes but then you're figuring that out the difference of that compared to uh, the actual value and so you're getting the actual percent of the error compared to the actual value So this might simplify reading an error The next error we'll talk about is the mean absolute percentage error So this error unlike the other ones is actually in percentage form many of the other errors You'll be looking at like the root mean squared error or the mean absolute error are just large numbers You could get an output like 172 uh, for the mean absolute error, but you could also get a number like 1,576 um, because it's really just the mean absolute error, so it's just whatever that average number might be. Whereas in this case, using the mean absolute percentage error, you're actually getting the percent of the error compared, or the, the, the proportion of the error compared to the actual value originally. So you're getting the difference between the actual and the forecast and then dividing that by the actual itself. So this is the percent of the error compared to the actual value. And so this is a little almost more easy to grasp and understand when you think about it from, you know, your own mental state. 
And this is why I kind of like the next error almost a little bit more, which is the root mean scaled error, because this is the ratio of the mean absolute error compared to the mean absolute error of the naive model. So you're comparing your model's mean absolute error to the naive model's absolute error. Now, if you recall, the naive model means we're just picking the previous value that we did in the previous from the previous uh, actual value. So you're just assuming that, hey, if we saw last month a sale of $1,000, we presume that this month we'll see a similar sale. So it's, it's comparing two models to each other. And essentially, if, for instance, your, your root mean scaled error is one, this means that you're basically just as good to pick the previous observations value as whatever model you've created. So this is kind of a, an easy way to understand how good your model is compared to another model. Now in this case, it's the naive model, but it's a great way, again, just to kind of compare and contrast two very different uh, data points. Whereas again, before the mean absolute error and the root mean squared error can be randomly large numbers that don't say too much unless you have another mean absolute error and root mean squared error to compare it to. And so these are, these are just the four big errors. Now, if you were to look at this, really all the errors doing, I'm just gonna give a quick example, is it's just figuring out the difference between, again, the actuals and the forecast. That's the reason I use the term actuals and forecast, because typically, if you, especially if you're in a finance department, that's what you'll usually see is actuals versus forecast and, and what was the difference. So this is all that it is doing. You know, if you look at the screen, you see this red dot, you see this blue dot, that space in between is your error. And so you're figuring out how, how big is that space and that's all you're trying to do. Now we're gonna go into R and we're gonna go and see how to use this mean absolute error and all of this using the accuracy function. And we'll kind of go over uh, just our, our data sets and, and how these different models that we've already worked with uh, play out. So I'll see you there. All right, welcome back to the R section of this, of this course. So if you recall in our previous uh, video, we talked about different models uh, and those basic models. And here is that data set that we had previously plotted. Um, if you recall, this blue line is the mean model, uh, this green line is the naive model, the straight red line, or at least a straight pointing red line that's pointing up, is the drift method, and then the seasonal naive is this up and down pink line. Now one extra line I've added is this yellow line, and this yellow line is the actual test data. If you recall, we broke up this data set into two different data sets. We broke it up into this first solid black line, which represents the actual data. And then we broke it up into the test data, which is this yellow line. So this yellow line is the actual data that these other lines are trying to predict. And if you notice, some of these are doing very terribly, and maybe you could argue that the, the red line is doing somewhat okay, but not, not great. You know, it's not actually following any of the up and down motion. It's really just following the trend itself. But now how do you actually mathematically state that one line is doing worse than the next? And this is where if you look over here under number eight that we see this accuracy function. So this accuracy function in R can be used to take the model name. So in this case, mean, the mean model or the mean method versus the test data. When we run this, what you'll notice is you'll get two lines, one that says training set and the next that says test set. So this is basically telling you, uh, this is basically giving you how bad did it do for the training data set and how bad did it do for the test data set when it was fitting it. Now you'll notice a lot of the very similar abbreviations we were talking about earlier. So you'll see the root mean squared error, the mean absolute error, the mean absolute percent error, and the mean absolute scaled error. So like we talked about earlier, the root mean squared error and the mean absolute error are kind of ambiguous. You see, again, 571. 544, and it really doesn't mean much when you're when you're seeing that value. It, it doesn't say much. It seems bad. It's a really high number, but it doesn't say that much. Then you see the mean absolute percent error, and now you can a little more clearly say that, okay, this is somewhat bad, 17%. Okay, maybe this error is kind of bad. And then you look at the mean absolute scaled error, which if you recall, is comparing this value to just picking the previous observation, and this is basically a ratio of how far that is off. And this is essentially saying 2.7, that is several times worse than just picking the previous value. So this model is not doing great, 
But let's check out these other methods and we can check out, I'm just gonna run these three in a row so that we can kind of just see them and compare them. Cause that's really what you wanna do is just compare and contrast these different models using this method. Otherwise it's really hard to tell what is occurring. So if you notice that these models definitely are doing much better than just the average method. So if we look at the naive model or method, you'll see that you know this is reduced drastically, the mean absolute error and the root mean squared error. And again, similarly, you're seeing a reduction in the MAPE and the MASE, uh, but it seems to almost even get better when you're doing the drift method. So you're seeing again, this reduction uh, in error um, everywhere, even all the way to the MACE and uh, the mean absolute percent error. Finally, you know, looking at uh, the seasonal naive, again, it kind of gets worse again. And, and so th in this case, the drift method was really, quote unquote, the best method. Again, it's pretty far off, but arguably it did do the best. Um, it's taking into account purely the trend portion of this, which we will kind of start to talk about more as we keep going on. But, but this is just using the basic model quality and error methods to calculate how well do these models fit. So that's all we plan to talk about for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start talking a little bit more about concepts like stationarity and trend. And that's where we're really going to start getting into the more complex concepts of modeling, things like ARIMA, things like, again, uh, with this drift method, it really just takes into consideration trend. And we're going to start talking about seasonality and et cetera. So thank you so much for joining us. And I hope to see you at the next video.